the leading Republican in the Senate, Mitch McConnell of Kentucky. Senator, welcome back to you. Um, having a difficult time hearing you, we'll try to establish that. Let me get my first question at your reaction to hearing your your colleagues say, look, this is different. Changing the rules here is not like it's been in the past with regard to judicial nominations. It is appropriate for the majority to be able to get the work done at once. Yeah, it's uh, the reason we call it the nuclear option, David, is because it's breaking the rules of the Senate in order to change the rules of the Senate, which the majority leader, as you pointed out in his book, indicated was something we should never do. Look, what are the, rather than getting down in the weeds on, on the rules, what is the problem here? The president has had 1,540 of his nominations confirmed, only four defeated. Uh, he's not lost a single member of the cabinet. Uh, he's getting them faster than President Bush was at the same time in his second term. Uh, the, pre the majority needs to bring these nominees up, most of them are going to be confirmed. It really kind of comes down to three appointments that the federal courts have told us were unconstitutionally recess appointed. Two members of the NLRB and the CFPB. We need to talk about that. And we're going to talk about it at a rather unusual uh, joint session in the old Senate chamber on Monday of all senators. And we need to start talking to each other and nether, instead of at each other and see if we can't resolve this in the same way that we did 10 years ago when Republicans had genuine provocation. Uh, we had had five of President Bush's circuit court nominees defeated by filibuster. Here, nobody's been defeated. They've all been uh, confirmed. And <laughs> that's why we're wondering why the uh, majority leader's thinking about uh, the nuclear trigger when all of the president's nominees are being confirmed. But just uh, as there were past statements that uh, that Senator Reid made that speak to sort of the folly of Washington in a lot of people's minds, here you are back in March of 2005 on CNBC advocating for the thing that he's talking about now. This is what you said. What they did last Congress was change 200 years of history during which we had never uh, killed uh, executive branch nominations by use of the filibuster. They introduced that. It's a terrible precedent. The Senate can, uh, with 51 votes, not 60, uh, reverse that uh, precedent. And I believe that it's time to do that. I believe that we will go forward with that uh, at a time of the majority leader's calling. So you were for it then. You think it's outrageous now? Look, I'm glad we didn't do it. Uh, the, the provocation was that five uh, circuit court nominations had been defeated with a filibuster for the first time in American history. The Democrats invented that. Uh, we went to the brink and we pulled back because cooler heads prevailed and we knew it would be a mistake uh, for the long term future of the Senate and the country. That's what I hope is going to happen here, David. We have a an opportunity to pull back from the brink in this joint meeting that we're going to have of all senators on the old Senate chamber Monday night. I hope we'll come to our senses and not change the core of the Senate. We have never. Mm -hmm change the rules of the Senate by breaking the rules of the Senate in order to diminish the voices of individual senators. We've never done that, and we sure shouldn't start it now, particularly since every one of the president's nominees that would be subject to this rules change have been confirmed. Do you really believe that uh, your old friend and colleague Harry Reid is the worst Senate leader ever if he goes forward with this? No, he won't be if, if he pulls back from the brink, as we did 10 years ago. We had much more serious provocation then than he has now. He's a reasonable man. He's a good majority leader. And we're going to have a chance to air all of this out in a joint conference with all of our members Monday. And I'm hoping we won't make this big mistake. One more on this. Secretary Napolitano of Homeland Security is now stepping down. Do you now see a nomination fight over a key security post, Secretary of Homeland Security, depending upon who the president puts forward, particularly with the immigration debate, uh, a key component of what the Secretary of Homeland Security does? Well, guys in your line of work tend to use the word fight when we're having a debate. Uh, some of the president's nominees have been quite controversial. I mean, that's what we do in the Senate. We have big debates over big issues. They've all been confirmed. Uh, we'll have a, take a look at whoever the new Secretary of Homeland Security is. I can't guarantee you there won't be a spirited debate. Look, we got over 300 million people in this country. We don't all agree on everything, and they elect all of us to come to Washington, and we have some big disagreements and big debates. But sooner or later, when it comes to nominations, as I've indicated, the president hadn't lost anybody. He hadn't lost anybody. Uh, are they saying they don't want us to even debate these nominations? 
and CRS says they're getting them more rapidly than President Bush got his. That's why we're wondering why, why this threat uh, to blow the Senate up uh, when the president's getting his nominees. On the issue of immigration, which I just referred to a moment ago, how important is it to you to act this year to get some kind of reform? Well, I hope we can. Uh, as you know, David, I'm the proud husband of an immigrant. Uh, a young girl came here at age eight not speaking a word of English. In fact, her parents didn't have enough money for a plane ticket. They came over on a freighter with the freight. And my wife, Elaine Chow, became Secretary of Labor and was in the Bush's, uh, President Bush's cabinet. Uh, look, I'm a big fan of what legal immigration has done for our country. I hope, even though the Senate bill, in my view, is deficient on the issue of border security, I hope we can get an outcome for the country that improves the current situation. I don't think anybody's satisfied with the status quo in immigration, and I, th I hope the House will be able to move forward on something and we can get this into conference and get an outcome that will be satisfactory can, for the American how people. How do you deal with 11 to 12 illegal immigrants, a uh, million immigrants in the country now without a pathway to citizenship? Is that dead on arrival well, if that remains? Well, you know, I think the, the stickiest issue actually is border security. The question is, can we actually get the border secure and not have this happen again? That's the stickiest issue, and I think the House will concentrate on that. I hope they will. We need to ser seriously beef up the border security part. I think that's the key to getting a final outcome. I want to talk about Obamacare and the implementation, which, of course, is, is controversial. A lot of senators on your side talking about repealing Obamacare. Uh, as they've tried to publicize this law and get people familiar with what uh, is possible as they're setting up exchanges around the country, this was a letter that you wrote to the NFL commissioner, one of the leagues that were going to help in publicizing this. You wrote, given the divisiveness and persistent unpopularity of this bill, it is difficult to understand why an organization like yours would risk damaging its inclusive and apolitical political brand by lending its name to its promotion. I read the letter, uh, Leader McConnell, and it was striking how political it was, that letter you wrote to them. You refer to it as a bill. It's actually the law of the land, which has even been affirmed by the Supreme Court. How can you write such a letter at a time when don't you feel the need for people to understand what the new law is? Well, the president himself seems to not think parts of the law ought to be implemented. I mean, he is selectively delaying uh, parts of it as if it's all just kind of a smorgasbord of options for him to figure out, you know, which ones to uh, <laughs> to execute and which well, part of the law. But a delay not is for not example. a failure to execute. A delay is not a well, failure for, to execute. For example, for example, they just decided to say never mind on the employer mandate. Well, what about the individual mandate? Does the president get to decide which parts of the law to? Uh, to uh, comply with and which parts not. It's a massive, complicated, unpopular bill. Obviously, but, if we had the votes, we would repeal it. Right. But the president but leader, it's not himself. A bill. But, it, but you support the democratic process. This is not a bill. This has been passed. No, this is law. the law of the land. You refer to it as yeah. a bill. Doesn't that undermine? I mean, if, you, <laughs> if, you, if the shoe were on the other foot and it were a, a law that was passed by Republicans in Congress, would you not refer to it as the law of the land and want to see it uh, implemented as best it could be, uh, despite the fact that well, you disagree with it? Well, of course, it's the law of the land. Then I wonder why the president himself is delaying various parts of it. Uh, but he, he, you could argue, is not executing or implementing the law that he thinks is a, such a wonderful thing for the country. Look, this is a big controversial issue. It's not going away. It's in all likelihood going to be the premier issue in the 2014 election. The American people dislike it even more now than they did when it was passed, and they hope that the Congress will respond to their desire to stop this train wreck before it happens. Final point here, another divisive issue, and that is a potential part of the Republican agenda this year, uh, and that is tax reform. Are you for tax reform, or might you even support some in the Republican caucus and others who are calling to, uh, for an abolishment to get rid of the Internal Revenue Service? What I would like to see is the same kind of premise that Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill, a Republican and a Democrat, had back in the 80s. And the premise was this. We're going to do tax reform, but it will be revenue neutral to the government. In other words, the government doesn't gain revenue for itself. It's for flattening out the, the tax rate, making our country more competitive. If we can agree in advance that the exercise will be conducted within those parameters, that it's not a tax increase, 
for the federal government, then I think it would be a very good thing for our country to do comprehensive tax reform, lower the rates, and make America more competitive in the global economy. All right, Lena McConnell, a lot of debates on a lot of issues that will continue. Appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. And coming up here, all eyes now on the House.